Dear colleagues, it is very much possible to do FACO in presence of constant head movements. This patient is at 67, has some neurological disorder and his head moves constantly to and fro. The patient has dense cataract and I have taken off the case for surgery. By this time, main incision and on side port has been made. Now I am injecting air bubble. My plan is to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye and here goes the dye. After injecting the dye, I don't wait much. I wait for 6 to 7 seconds and I wash the dye out. Now I inject viscoelastic substance. I use ASPMC in most of my cases unless it is a very hard cataract and uh, I need protection of viscoat. This is ASPMC. Now I am using this needle through the side main incision and I have raised a capsular tag. Now I am doing capsulorexis in spite of constant heat movement. In spite of constant heat movements, I am able to do a fairly round rexis. Now hydrodissection is done. BSS is used and a 27 gas cannula is used to do hydrodissection. Hydrodissection is done very gently. The nucleus is tapped and it is rotated. And now is the time to enter into the eye. Visco is injected again. In this case, I'm going to use Oatly Cataryx Easy Facomation. Here it is. And I'm planning to do vertical chop in this case. In vertical chop, what we do is I hold the nucleus very firmly at the center, scratch with this chopper, go to a little deeper level and Divide the nucleus anterior posteriorly. This is vertical chop. And now I hold at another place, scratch the nucleus and chop it. Don't go to the periphery. Remain almost at the central area of the cataract. And here, this is a partial chop, this hard code is not yet chopped, so I go hold it firmly again and chop this central hard part. So the nucleus has been divided now into four fragments. Each fragment is now emulsified and removed. I am in FACO 2 mode from the beginning. I didn't sculpt, I didn't go to FACO on mode. In FACO 2 mode from the beginning in this case, I am using 450 millimeter of mercury vacuum, 50 ml per minute flow rate, and the FECO power is 70%. So, if the head moves constantly, uh, we must take off such cases and do, because our brain gets adapted to these movements very fast. To make this surgery easy, I took help of peribulbar anesthesia. So the eye wall is anesthetized by peribulbar injection. We can see a nuclear, small nuclear fragment engaged at the side port and that must be removed before removal of cortical matter. What do dislodge this from the side port? Take the Simco cannula and guide this out. Now I remove the rest of the cortical matter. 
In this case, there is only one side port. So I have to take help of this Simco cannula. One can use a coaxial irrigation aspiration device if that looks elegant. So the cortical matter is clean, the capsule has been polished. Now a hydrophilic intraocular lens is being implanted under irrigation. Both the haptics have gone into the capsular bag. No, the drilling haptic has not gone. This is, be, it is being dialed in. Now both the haptics are in the capsular bag. Since the eye well has been implanted under irrigation, there is very little viscoelastic substance. The visco which was there in the lumen of the cartridge is there and that has been irrigated out. That's it. The lens is nicely centered. Now a little bit of moxifloxacin is injected. Here it is. This is moxifloxacin. Now I hydrate the sideboard. This is BSS, 127 gauge cannula. And now the antechamber is formed. My main incision doesn't need hydration in 99.9% cases. And this is the final wash under higher magnification. By this, the visco that sticks to the corneal endothelium comes out. And that's it. This is how I form the antechamber and conclude the case. Thanks for your attention.